Here's Saka Budding with me our former WBO lightweight champion Terry Flanagan. Now Terry, you're looking, you're looking great, you're looking great today, you look sharp and pads. How are you feeling ahead of your world title shot against Mia Saka? Yeah, feel, yeah, feeling great. I mean, well, another world title fight, Mia Saka, I can't argue. Well, before we talk about Mia Saka, you've wanted to move up and wait for a while now, and now you have this opportunity. What would it mean for you to become a two-weight world champion in front of your hometown fans in Manchester? It means everything. I mean, winning the lightweight world title here is a dream come true. Now I've got a chance to double that and become a, a double world champion. And yeah, not many people have done that. I think Ricky Hatton is the last to do it out of, this, out of Manchester. So yeah, to emulate someone like Ricky is a dream come true. Well, Mushaka uh, has said during the build up, they've been ducking their elite fights out of the right way, they moved up because they were yeah. uh, retired, uh, they gave it, vacated. What do you have to say to that, and do you feel that like he's underestimating it? Yeah, I don't know if he's underestimating it. I don't, don't think he believes half the stuff he says anyway. I think he just says it, he thinks that's how he's got that. But yeah, I mean, uh, as much as ducking the fighters, I don't know one. I mean, Crawford's a good fighter, don't get me wrong, but. If the, the opportunity to come on to fight Crawford, I'd jump at the chance, I mean, never did. Uh, the way things have fell, they fell, fell nice for me, and I'm fighting for a world title, for a vacant title against Mori Suck, who, um, who I think I'm capable of beating. Do you think he's trying to use the tactic to get under his skin? Yeah, but he won't get under my skin, I'm, I'm easy, I'm one of the most easy going guys down to earth. You, you, you'll have a me, I'll give a shit for nothing. Anyone says just when that bell goes flying like you'll know. Well, Musaka's someone that's very rangy and possesses a lot of power. But what do you see differently in Musaka compared to the 33 rounds you have faced? This one, he's, he's, like you say, he's tall, he's rangy, he uses his attributes well, but it's, it's another fighter at the end of the day. I see him as a, a good fighter, I don't see him as a, an elite fighter. I'm prepared for elite fighters, I'm not prepared for Morisuka, I'm prepared for better, so I should be ready and more capable of winning this fight. With the extra weight, how much of an impact has that been for your training camp this morning? Of course, yeah, I mean, having to not kill myself weeks out before the fight, I'm just getting a ball, Eat, I'm eating. At this point, I, I won't be eating, I'm eating, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling strong, I'm feeling better. I want, I want, want to fight, fight that come quick enough. How much am I worth? How much do you call it your weight? 10-4. Now, how much of a struggle was it making 134 pounds? Um, what's the main reason moving up because you couldn't get the marquee names that you wanted in the division? Of course, yeah. I mean, I seen like, them elite fighters at lightweight eventually moving up to super lightweight anyway. So I thought, let's go over there and get a title, and they'll, they'll come back in. Well, since Terence Crawford moved up, the world moved up to Alfred, the, the, the division really has opened up. Do you feel like there's a big opportunity for, for someone like yourself to stamp your mark in the division? I feel like it's a good opportunity, yeah, of course, but uh, I thought I wanted to do that lightweight from winning the World Title and it just didn't, didn't pan out. I want to say oh, I want crawling for them, fight screaming for them, I wanted Linares, I wanted Lomachenko, I wanted them all, but it just didn't happen. It's not like I don't want these fights, I want these fights. and. For some reason, these fighters don't. Maybe they don't see me as a name and they see me little reward and big risk, so they don't take the fights, but they're the fights I want and they're the fights I'll be wanting after this fight. I'll come through it. Well, like I say, I'm not looking past my sucker, but I've got to come through this fight first, but if I do, then they're the fights I want. Do you feel like this is the way for the rest of your career now? Not at all, I feel like I could go again. I mean, I'm plenty big enough, I'm tall enough. I'm 5'10", I'm plenty tall enough to move up to what weight if I want. So, yeah, of course, I'm, I'm happy at the minute where I am, but them opportunities come up at the weight above, I'll jump again, I'm easy. Well, top back promoter Bob Allen discussed in the Box Nation podcast about the possibility of Lemon Chinko facing at 140. And I thought that you wanted to launch a fight with Bob Allen. How does it sound to tend to be facing one of the best powerful pound boxers in the senior level? It's great, isn't it? I mean, being talked in, in, in them big fights, that's what I want. The big fights, and hopefully they'll come through this. We'll uh, talk, talk proper, but now it's. So we finally go Mori Sucko and let's get through this one and we'll see what happens. So then after the first match, the best thing I can say is Terry Flanagan for Final TV. Cheers mate, thank you. Nice one.